Hey everyone, this is Jeff Gumis from Crowded Learning, and I'm excited to welcome you back to our Lynx event, Build Your Toolkit for Adult Learning with Crowded Learning. If you are just joining us, this is a 10-week event for which we just passed the halfway point. But not to worry, the event is structured so that a new topic related to reading and writing instruction and technology integration is started every two weeks. This week's focus is on free resources that support development of vocabulary and grammar skills. As we begin our resource exploration and discussion around concepts related to grammar, usage, and vocabulary, we look to the College and Career Readiness Standards for Adult Education. The language standards within the CCRS include the rules of standard written and spoken English. As we explore this week's resources, we will be focusing on a specific set of standards. Language Anchor Standards 1 and 2 focus on standard conventions of grammar, usage, capitalization, punctuation, and spelling. Language Anchor Standard 3 focuses on making effective word and punctuation choices in different contexts. And finally, Language Anchor Standard 6 focuses specifically on Tier 2 academic vocabulary. Anchor Standards 4 and 5 also deal with aspects of vocabulary, but they will not be the focus of this week's exploration. Now to this week's resource exploration. For standards align grammar, punctuation, and usage, we are going to take a look at Quill. Quill is an interactive set of diagnostic tools and assessments to help learners develop their skills using conventions of standard written English. Quill has a number of different activity types that suit various instructional settings. Teacher-led activities include an instructional lesson plan and a set of group activities that students access by computer or mobile device. Within Quill's interactive whole class lessons, lesson objectives are set at the start of class. Then, concepts are developed through a combination of instruction, teacher modeling, and paired and individual response prompts. The bulk of Quill's activities are delivered through two main types of activities. Sentence writing activities ask students to apply a grammatical concept in writing, rewriting, or combining sentences. These activities also provide learners with great typing practice as well. Passage proofreading activities ask students to apply a particular concept or concepts they have learned by finding the necessary edits within a text selection. Quill offers a number of diagnostic and formative assessments at all levels, which allow for continuous monitoring of learner progress as they build their skills. Crowded Learning provides alignments of over 500 of Quill's lessons, activities, and assessments to the College and Career Readiness Standards and to Table 1112. This allows instructors to easily locate lessons, activities, and assessments that are specific to the concepts they wish to teach. Our second resource as part of this week's exploration is a vocabulary resource. As a reminder, vocabulary is one of the four components of evidence-based reading instruction. In looking at the components that focus on understanding when reading, Vocabulary is the necessary building block of understanding individual words required so that readers are able to derive meaning and comprehend the texts they read. Tier 2 vocabulary words are words learners encounter in written text more than in conversation and whose meanings may not be immediately apparent based on context clues. Tier 2 words are often referred to as academic vocabulary, as they frequently appear in informational and academic texts, which are the very texts learners are expected to engage with as defined by the standards. Appalachian State University's free vocabulary curriculum includes 38 lessons, each containing five Tier 2 words with a series of activities designed to help learners build their academic vocabulary. Crowded Learning has also created a supplemental set of Quizlet activities to provide mobile-friendly practice with the words from each lesson. And now I'm excited to have the opportunity to share a recent interview I had with Steve Schmidt. Steve brings a wealth of experience in adult education as an instructor, coordinator, and a local program director. For the past nine years, he has been a professional developer and has done a number of trainings with Appalachian State University's 
vocabulary curriculum. Well, thanks so much, Jeff. We are really proud of this resource that we created some years ago. And this is really a wonderful resource for teaching vocabulary in the way it's meant to be taught. You know, I grew up um, as a kid learning vocabulary words with, you know, you just write them down and write sentences. But research is showing that, you know, using dictionaries and just you know, copying words and sentences really is not very effective for our adult learners to, to, to learn vocabulary. And instead, direct instruction of vocabulary is really the way to go. And so we developed these lessons to be able to help instructors in the field, you know, busy instructors that don't have time to create resources to be able to have these and be able to use them. So I uh, just want to walk you through what you have here inside a lesson. First of all, you know, how did we decide what words to choose? Well, we wanted to choose tier two words. Tier two words are words that cut across subject areas and they're ones that you might see in English, in math, in science, and social studies. A lot of times directions for things will have tier two words inside those. So these are really vital for our students to be able to know and to understand how to use these words. So, we have uh, 37 lessons that have these tier two words inside them. We start out each lesson with a knowledge rating scale. And this is something you can do with a student both before and after the lesson where you've directly taught the words. And so this uses um, Edgar Dale's um, knowledge rating scale. I've, see, I've, heard, I've never heard this word before. I've heard it. I think it means, oh, I know this word. It's got something to do with and I know for sure the meaning of the words. So you could go through and have them. It's just a simple check off chart, have them do it before it. Sometimes after the word is taught, a student will realize that that's not the word they were thinking of and, and may realize that it's a different word. But the knowledge rating scale helps to students to be thinking about the words and how they may have heard them or seen them before. So um, a nice thing to do before diving into the teaching side. So we really suggest that instructors use these to directly teach the word. You're gonna put the word on a whiteboard. Um, we've provided a very simple definition. A lot of times those dictionary definitions are very confusing and don't usually help students get the meaning. So we've tried to provide a very simple, very straightforward definition, just a few words so students could really understand the basic meaning. We've also included the uh, parts of speech, synonym and antonym. We could use a, um, a chart along with this where you could have the student put the word down and maybe draw a picture of it and put um, you know, what part of speech is and a word that means the same. Those are helpful tools to use a graphic organizer with that. Um, a Friar model, a Freyer model or something like that would be great. So um, we've done all the heavy lifting, the definition, all that's there. So. What we suggest in teaching the word is that you, know, you define it and talk about it. Talk about it in context where you've seen the word and used the word, but then really invite students to talk about where they may have seen and where they may have heard the word as well. So it's really involved with direct instruction. And you'll notice that there's five words total. That's what the research shows is really the most effective for students to actually be able to learn the word. Certainly you can teach more words, but our students really going to learn. You could teach 20, 25 words, but our students really going to learn that many. So really suggest just doing five words, five new words with the students uh, per week. And that way they can really have a chance to use them and practice those throughout the week. So maybe Monday you do the direct teaching for the word that might take 25 or 30 minutes. And the great thing about these lessons then is inside the direct teaching, they're providing some context. So here we can see on this page, we see some examples of where the word is used. And this can be a springboard then for your discussions with students. Uh, we see the word alter here, and there's some examples of how it's used, but then it asks the question that you can ask your students, have you ever had to alter your plans because of illness or weather? And then that gets the student talking about and using the word. Oh yeah, I've had to alter it because you know, I was sick on my birthday last year, so we didn't go out to dinner or whatever. So um, we've provided some of the context, and of course you can add your own. This is set up as a Word document, so you can take it, mold it, make it, change it, and have it meet your needs um, the best way that you want. So that's all set up and available for you to do. 
The rest of the lesson is set up with several um, things that the students can do. And each one of the exercises gets harder as we go on through. It starts out with a very familiar fill in the blank. That's the easiest task. It goes on to a sentence completion where you, we have the word and then we have a blank. And the student can't fill in the blank unless they really understand what the word means. So you know, something that has become scarce in the United States is they'd have to really understand the word scarce in order to be able to fill that in. Uh, then we go to a more challenging activity with the yes, no, why. And the yes, no, why's have two of the vocabularies in it. And so the, it, it poses a statement here and the student would have to answer yes, no, why. If the child cries for something, do you think it's okay to relent and alter what you said? It's got two of the words in there, relent and alter. So a student would have to know what both the words mean and be able to answer that as yes, I think it is okay, or no, I don't think it's okay, and then go on to do the why. So some of our instructors do this where they'll teach the word early in the week and maybe the next day do the fill in the blank activity or maybe the next day then do the sentence completion and the yes no why so you really if you if your class met every day could do one of these activities each day and these lessons are designed so that it's, it's just not a here give it to the student and have them do it but have the student do it and then talk about it afterward you could go through each of the answers with the student and have them give input, really get them talking as much as possible. So fill in the blank, sentence completion, the yes, no, why. The last activity is a uh, read and respond activity. And the key with read and respond is it asks questions that have the vocabulary words in them. For some of the lessons we were able to provide a reading for those. Others we suggest a resource to use. We were getting into copyright issues so we could not put all the resources down that we would have liked to have done. But you can use any resource for the read and respond and it, you know, use something else, another free resource that's there. Maybe use you know, something from Newzella or something and you would just have to create a couple of questions that have the vocabulary word inside it. So um, you really have a great vehicle here inside these vocabulary lessons for teaching the tier two words. But notice again, I said teaching. This isn't designed as a worksheet where you just hand the student and let them do it and let them go. It's really designed for direct explicit instruction on those five vocabulary words where you're actually teaching it and showing the students on the whiteboard how it's used and having discussions using the examples, using the context there. So, um, what I really hope that you'll use these and find these as a valuable resource. We have had uh, feedback from folks around the country who have used those and really had some good, um, good uh, experiences with using those with their students. You know, some people are put off by, gosh, only, only teaching five words, but I would really suggest more, more is not always better. More is sometimes is just more. And just teaching those five words, if you really take the time to teach those and then use those throughout the week is a great way to go. Some instructors have also done things like word jars. If they hear someone use the word through their daily life, they heard somebody on the radio mention or somebody on the internet or uh, somebody on TV, they would bring in the time that they did those and put those in a jar and maybe the instructor would do something special when they got a certain number of those words um, that the students have used. But um, they're really a great way to get discussion going, get students thinking. And these are really, you know, we have such a limited time with our students. So teaching these tier two words is a really high value way of, of spending class time. It really will pay dividends because students will be using these across subject areas and um, really benefit them. It'll you know, help so much with their reading comprehension skills. You know, having a lack of vocabulary is one of the biggest reasons why students have trouble understanding what they read. So really getting to know these words will help them so much with, be able, with being able to better understand what they read. So um, that's, the, that's the thought behind these vocabulary lessons. And um, I know if you use these and try these out that you'll find these to be a valuable part of your classroom toolkit. 
So um, thank you so much, Jeff, for asking me to, uh, to speak about these. Thanks for sharing. I, I learned a lot today. I've, I've talked about this resource in the past, but di didn't really realize some of the sort of nuances. There's some really good, obviously, thought put into this. And for folks who are new to this resource, as Steve said, there's five words per lesson, and there's, I think, 38 lessons. So there's about 190 um, tier two academic vocabulary words that, that for which there are uh, lessons and activities just like this. Um, within this resource. So I hope you take some time to explore it and hopefully it becomes useful for you in your um, instructional practice. So thanks, Steve. You're very welcome.